Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finished Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 2 of making the Chrome Dino game. Here, we will program the obstacle movement towards the dino, fix some layering problems and ensure that the game actually does end. If you haven't watched part 1, then click on the card up here. Without further ado, let's begin coding. To control the speed with which the obstacles move towards the dino, we will create a variable called xval for all sprites, then set it to negative 8. The absolute value of this will get higher and higher as the game progresses to increase the difficulty, but that's a topic for later. One last thing in the dino. Whenever it is touching the obstacles while the game is going on, we need the game to end, so adjust the game over variable accordingly. Okay, that's pretty much it for the player, so now let's go and program the obstacles. After init, we first need to delete the existing clones within a repeat 1. Now, create a variable called clone for this sprite only. Like previously, this variable will be used for distinguishing between the clones and the sprite itself. Set clone to no and then create another variable called obstacle spawn counter for all sprites. This variable will control the rate at which new obstacles show themselves. Initially, make that zero. Then hide, go to the back layer and finally position at the right. It's not the extreme corner because we can use the backgrounds to later mask the sides. Alright, during the tick message, we must ensure that we are only dealing with the clones. If the X position of a clone goes too leftward, then we will delete that clone. Otherwise, we just change X by X velocity. This will give the illusion of the dino running towards the obstacles. Till now, we've only moved the already existing clones and haven't created any new ones. So create a custom block called check and spawn obstacles. Place this to the side and then drop its implementation within the else condition. As I mentioned previously, the rate at which the new clones will be generated is dependent on the spawn counter variable. Thus, we can just increment that variable by one. Great, let's move on to the function definition itself. If obstacle spawn counter mod, the ceiling of negative 400 divided by xval is zero, then create a clone and reset the obstacle spawn counter variable. Feel free to modify this exact value if you want the obstacles to spawn faster or slower in aggregate. If you got this so far, then make sure you like this video. It's a small ask and it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. With that out of the way, let's ensure that the spawn clone has all the properties set up correctly. Grab a when I start as a clone block and set the clone variable to yes. Show the clone and now we must decide on the costume. There are six different costumes in the sprite and five unique ones. The sixth costume is just the bird of the fifth costume but animated. But we will switch to a random one of the four costumes for the time being because at the start we wouldn't want any birds to show. They will only begin to show themselves after the score is reached a certain threshold. Great, that will be it for the obstacles for now and you can move on to the backgrounds. It has three different costumes which when together perfectly superimpose themselves onto the screen. This sprite will play a crucial role when it comes to switching the mode of the game from day to night or vice versa. Anyway, let's go this sprite into existence. After init numbers, go to the center, go right up to the front and then switch the costume to left. Like we did for the obstacles, we will need to distinguish between the clones and the sprite itself. So create a variable called clone for this sprite only. First, set this to yes then repeat three times. In each iteration, create a clone and then switch the costume. Finally, set the clone variable to no. This will result in the clones being differentiated from the sprite. During each tick message, check if clone is yes. If the condition is true, show, otherwise hide. There's a small difference in layering between the three sprites. Basically, the centered costume needs to go to the back layer while the corner ones can remain at the front. Well, not exactly at the front because we will get the thumbnail and other sprites at the top, but almost to the front and you'd get the idea at this point. Anyway, that is pretty much it. 
If you test out the program, you should have the obstacles spawning beautifully, with the ends neatly cordoned off. Also, when we touch the obstacle with a dino, the game actually ends on its own. This is amazing progress, and we'll build this up even more in the next few episodes. With that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like if this helped you out, and until next time, peace out.